Few people know when the police can and cannot lawfully search their car. Here's the answer. I'm Daniel Barnett, a barrister based in central London, and I'm also the presenter of the Legal Hour on LBC Radio. In this video, I'll explain when the police can use stop and search powers to search your vehicle, when reasonable suspicion is not required, other powers to search your vehicle, and the rules governing those searches. But first of all, if you haven't already done so, please uh, subscribe to this channel. Just click on the uh, subscribe button and the notification bell to receive all of my latest explainer videos. Thank you. Most people know the police can lawfully stop and search individuals without arrest under certain circumstances, but many are unaware these powers extend to vehicles. The main stop and search power is found in Section 1 of the Police and Criminal Evidence Act 1984, often abbreviated to PACE. Requirements to conduct the search are set out in Section 1, Subsection 5, which states that the constable must have reasonable grounds for suspecting that he will find one of the following. Stolen articles, a bladed article which has is being or will be used to commit the offence of having a bladed article in a public place, a firework prohibited by firework regulations, or a prohibited article. What does prohibited article mean? Well, it's defined as one of the following. An offensive weapon, an article which is made or adapted for use in the course of or in connection with burglary, theft, fraud, criminal damage, or taking a vehicle without authority, or an article intended by the person having it with him to be used in such a way by them or by another person. Having reasonable grounds to suspect that one of these items will be found isn't a particularly stringent test, but both case law and the rules contained in Code A of PACE, the Police and Criminal Evidence Act, make it clear there has to be something supporting the officer's decision. Paragraph 2.2 of the code indicates that reasonable suspicion will only be present if they formed a genuine suspicion in their own mind and there's an objective basis for that suspicion based on facts, information and or intelligence which are relevant to the likelihood that the object in question will be found. It's important to note that subsection 5 prevents an officer from searching a vehicle in a garden or a yard or land used as a dwelling unless they have reasonable grounds for believing that the person in charge of the vehicle doesn't reside in the dwelling and the vehicle isn't in that place with the express or implied permission of a person who resides in the dwelling. This means the police cannot lawfully search your vehicle if it's parked on your premises unless there are reasonable grounds to believe you don't live at the address and don't have the actual residence permission to be there. Section 60 of the Criminal Justice and Public Order Act 1994 gives the police a second major power to stop and search your car, one without a requirement for reasonable suspicion. This power only kicks in if it's been authorised by an inspector or a more senior officer within a defined area. Under subsection 1, this is only possible if the officer reasonably believes that incidents involving serious violence might take place in the area, that an incident involving serious violence has taken place, and a dangerous instrument or offensive weapon used in the incident is being carried in the area. Or that people are carrying dangerous instruments or offensive weapons in the area without good reason. Authorisation can only be granted for up to 24 hours initially, but subsection 3 allows it to be extended for a further 24 hours. Where an authorisation is made, the police do not require reasonable suspicion before searching anyone. But paragraph 2.14a of the PACE code makes it clear that the power shouldn't be used arbitrarily. Officers mustn't stop and search for reasons unconnected with the authorisation, and they shouldn't discriminate unlawfully when conducting searches. When your vehicle is searched, the police must carry out the steps set out in paragraph 3.A of PACE, Police and Criminal Evidence Act, PACE Code A. If the constable isn't in uniform, they must take reasonable steps to show you their warrant card. Whether in uniform or not, they must inform you that you're being detained for the purposes of a search. They must state their name or warrant number and the station to which they're attached. And they must identify the legal search power which is being exercised and clearly explain the object of the search. 
If your vehicle is searched under the ordinary stop and search powers contained in section one of PACE, the officer must clearly explain the grounds for the reasonable suspicion that makes the search lawful. If the search is under the suspicionless stop and search powers that I talked about a moment ago, the officer must explain the nature of the power, the authorization, and the fact it's been given. You're entitled to a copy of the search record, which must be made unless it's wholly impracticable, as long as you apply for it within three months. You should be told this before the search takes place. If the record of the search is made when it takes place, paragraph 4.2 of Code A says you should be offered a copy of it or a receipt explaining how to obtain a copy. The police must follow these rules. If they don't, you can complain or even sue in certain circumstances. In some cases, failure to follow these rules can result in evidence that the police recovers being ruled inadmissible at a subsequent criminal trial, meaning the prosecution can't rely on it. But this isn't automatic. You might also be interested in my video on your rights during stop and search. Although the main provisions used to search your vehicle are likely to be stop and search powers, there are others. Any provision that allows the police to search premises with or without a warrant can also be used to search vehicles because section 23 of the Police and Criminal Evidence Act 1984 defines premises as including any vehicle. For a full explanation of when the police can and cannot search premises, see my video, Can the Police Enter and Search Your House, which you'll find up here. To summarise, there are six main circumstances when the police can search your vehicle under these provisions. If a magistrate or a judge grants a search warrant, if you consent in writing for the purpose of executing an arrest warrant, fourth for the purpose of arresting a person for an indictable offence or a number of less serious offences, fifth for the purpose of recapturing a person who is unlawfully at large, and sixth for the purpose of saving life or limb or preventing serious damage to property. You might also be interested in this video on your rights if the police arrest you. I hope you found this explainer video useful. If you have, click subscribe below to receive more of my videos. Thank you for watching, stay safe, bye bye.